Good evening, boys and girls. I am Razmir. I bid you welcome. Tonight, in celebration of the holy holiday of Halloween, the night where imagination is encouraged and expected to run rampant and wild, when we stare into the oncoming maelstrom of malicious darkness and declare, Do your worst! Yes, tonight, in honor and in celebration of this holiday, I shall read you yet another classic tale of terror. H.P. Lovecraft's The Call of Cthulhu. I shall not keep you all night, dear listeners, so I shall abridge certain parts of the story, as well as make an effort to modernize some of the prose so that younger members of the audience can better understand the story, so that perhaps they themselves might develop an interest in the original tale. Let us begin. Shall we? <laughs> Our story begins when Professor George Gamel Angill finds a small statue that a somewhat extravagant imagination would yield simultaneous images of an octopus, a dragon, and a pulpy human caricature. A tentacled head surmounted upon a grotesque and scaly body with rudimentary wings. Professor George finds out that the small bas-relief handheld statue is built by Henry Anthony Wilcox, a student of his. Wilcox says that the statue was inspired by weird and terrifying dreams of a strange green, oozing, ruined city called Relais. To make matters more curious, there are strange and terrifying rumors of cultic rituals popping up in small rural areas just outside of town. But good old Professor George doesn't let the deranged ramblings of a disturbed youth or unsettling rumors of unspeakable nearby horror spoil his good mood. Instead, he heads out into the night to socialize with friends and colleagues. He even brings the freaky little statue with him. It's bound to be an excellent conversation starter. At this quaint little shindig, good old Professor George meets police official Inspector John Raymond Legrassi, a friend of a friend who went to school with another friend who aren't friends anymore. You know how it is. Anyway, Inspector Legrassi notices the statue right away and says, Now hey, that looks just like one of the statues from a freaky voodoo cult meeting we stumbled upon while working on a missing persons case. They had all these dead bodies around a statue just like that one and they were chanting, Flugi Mulaha Katulu Rele Walawa Flektagen Bugandar Vite Katulu Rele. I didn't want to interrupt because the tune was so catchy and the dance choreography looked like they spent a lot of time on it. But once they was done with their little number, we gave them a good old police raid, billy clubs and pistol whips for everyone. We interrogated them to discover the rhyme or reason of what they were doing there. For, as you all well know, it is illegal to perform a freaky voodoo cult meeting outside of town and perform ghastly human sacrifices, without the proper permits, of course. One of the cultists started babbling, You don't get it, man. You don't know. Cthulhu, he's gonna raise up and wake up the dead, and, and one day he's totally gonna just smash up your stupid system, man, with, like, zombie apocalypse and robot apocalypse and germ apocalypse and every... Uh, every apocalypse. He's one of the old ones, man, and he knows where it's at. It was at this point that a wizened, scar-faced, gray-beard, eye-patched, peg-legged man of the sea stepped into the conversation. He had also been invited to the party, but it was one of those deals where 
you invite someone and you just want to avoid being rude but you really really hope they don't show up anyway sort of deals the sea captain had overheard the conversation and noticed the small octopi headed dragon winged human bodied little statue at which point he blurted out Arr, i know that beastie the professor and the inspector had now given the sea captain their full, undivided attention, and pleaded that he explain. Yeah, it could have been, should have been, worse than you would ever know. I was sailing around the Sargazzo Sea with an archaeological crew searching for the island tomb of the barbaric King Conan of Aquilonia. We thought we found the place when we came across an island with a ruined city covered in green, smelly slime. To make a long story short, a few booby traps later, and we had awakened this unspeakably ugly, 150-foot-tall monster. Some of the crew went mad, blind, and white-haired just from looking at the creature. It chased us all the way back to our boat, and as we sailed off, it followed us into the waters. Now, this abomination had killed a few too many good men and even a friend of mine. So I turned the boat right around and rammed the beast in the head, splattered its brains all over the bow of me boat. Dumb bastard let out a death rattle and sank back into the sea. Professor George and Inspector Lagrassi both asked the captain if he was sure the beast had been slain. He replied, Well, it did have an octopus for a head. And those little sea critters can grow back missing body parts right proper quick. So it may be possible the creature could have survived and regenerated its ruined flesh. But if me smacking it with the bow of me boat can knock it out cold, then I'm quite certain any sort of modern gunnery could finish the beast off. So I guess there is nothing to fear then, pondered the professor. Nothing but fear itself, replied the inspector. Yar, that. And giant penguins. Giant penguins and killer flying apes. Those are the beasts that keep me up at night, added the sea captain. The end. Or is it? <laughs>